All right, so yesterday we took those long billets of 1084 and 15 and 20. We cut them into uh, four inch pieces, stacked them, weld them, forged weld them and drew them out. Uh, they were getting a little bit too heavy to, uh, to handle. Also, I'm a bit under the weather, so I was like absolutely smoke checked after just drawing them out. Uh, so we cut it short. Uh, today we're gonna cut them in half and then continue to draw them out and then try and make an interesting pattern. And it should be pretty interesting because when we were, uh, when I stack the steel, typically if I want a really organic looking pattern, I don't, I don't do the whole like uh, 1084, 15 and 20, 1084, 15 and 20. I don't alternate the steel. I just throw it into a big, a big huge uh, pile and then just grab whatever. And it's all, cause it's all sanded, right? With the grinder, so it's all shiny. So I have no idea what's what. So um, I think it's funny when people call it random pattern but it started out very systematic. So I try my random pattern, I try to make it as random as possible. Um, so we're gonna take that random pattern and do uh, some of the steps uh, of a mosaic billet, um, but we're going to not f uh, follow through with the mosaic billet, but it's, it should give us a really interesting pattern. So let's get to that. All right, so this is what I'm thinking for the pattern. So this is what we have right now. We have a squared off billet with linear layers. We're gonna go ahead and smash in those corners, making it an octagon. And the cool thing about smashing Damascus is every single hammer blow, um, no matter how hard or how soft, will alter the pattern in some way. So we're gonna smash down these corners, hopefully pretty evenly, and it's gonna uh, alter the pattern into like a U-shape type deal. We're gonna just flip that billet, reorient it so it's more vertical, and then we're gonna squish it into uh, a rectangle. That's gonna give us this. Then we're going to stack that, those rectangles into a stack of four and forge weld that. And that's gonna give us what is called W's. Now, if I remember right, uh, the person that created W's was uh, Don Fogg. He's one of the, uh, the greats as far as bladesmithing history is concerned and um, really paved the way for bladesmiths today and uh, top people uh, like Jason Knight. Um, so, and he's paving the way for bladesmiths like currently. So um, it's really important for you to respect those that came before. We're all standing on the, the shoulders of giants. And uh, so if you're a bladesmith, you should absolutely know who Don Fogg is. And if that does not sound familiar, you need to Google him right now because you shouldn't be making this pattern if you don't know where it came from. All right, so let's get to that. And this is what we got. As you can see, some of these ends are pretty rough. So I'm gonna have to cut or grind those off. So let's do that. All right, so we took care of those tips. Let's go ahead and uh, etch one of them so we can see what the pattern looks like. So my ferric chloride is a four to one uh, ferric, or water to ferric chloride mixture. Just gonna give it a couple dunks and see how it looks. All right, so here's the pattern. Not exactly what we're looking for, but it still looks pretty cool. Has some pretty organic uh, thicknesses to, you know, the 15 and 20 and 1084. Also off camera, I went ahead and ground out all those bad welds. This is extremely important to do, you know, so that later on you're not forge welding a D lamb in the center that you can't see. Now we're just roughly flattening the billet prior to controlling the thickness, which is what I'm doing here. I'm using stacked up steel just to ensure that the, it's, you know, that, that cold steel is stopping my die and only smashing the hot steel to a specific thickness. This will ensure that each billet that I do this way will be the same exact thickness. This will pay dividends uh, with the prep later. 
right, so here's the final billets. Let's go ahead and cut off an end and etch it and see what it looks like. Well, I guess this is more of a S pattern than it is W's, which will be really cool, I think. All right, now we're cutting the two billets in half so we can stack them on top of each other. But first we need to clean the surfaces. I'm gonna use my Broadbeck Ironworks surface grinder attachment. This surface grinder also is definitely something that if you're going to be doing a lot of Damascus, or especially doing mosaic Damascus, you absolutely want to invest in. Just look at how clean uh, the surface grinder makes these billets, it's insane. Really makes forge welding so much more painless. Now I'm putting on my flat plant so we can grind the faces of those billets so we can etch them, see how they're looking. I'm loving how organic this uh, pattern's looking. Reminds me of like a flowing river. Dude, I am super curious to see how this is gonna look going down a blade. All right, now we gotta weld it up. Just like the first time, I made the billet around four inches so I could get that nice, even press. So I'll do this two or three times just to ensure that the forge weld is good before I start smashing it long ways. Also like last time, I'm using a piece of mild steel to control the size of the billet. And this is what we got so far. Let's grind the edge and let's see what it looks like. Look at that, that looks pretty badass. I can't wait to see that flowing down a blade. I just gotta decide whether or not I'm gonna four way it or not to a true mosaic. I guess we'll find out on the next episode. So I'll see you then.